so if we come to the simulink and here we use the uh, e capture module if you if you want to use the e capture module we will come to this section the block section for the specific microcontroller and this is the yeah here it is so this is the e cap block so if you if you open this block here you will see all the settings that we have discussed in the previous part of this video that is for example uh, it uh, on which pin you want to use the e capture so you want the e capture 2 3 or 4 so you have seven different pin uh, for e capture module and then this is the counter phase offset value so basically it will instead of starting from zero it will start from some value that you put here and this is the sample time obviously it depends upon your capturing so if, if the your signal is coming at uh, let's say 1000 hertz so you probably need to keep it above 1000 hertz to properly capture that value and if you come down to here this is what we have talked earlier this is the prescaler and if you remember in the data sheet it was given from 0 from sorry from 2 to 62 and here they have given it from 0 to 31 but whatever value you put here it actually means from uh, 2 to 62 and then this is the the continuous and one shot mode whatever mode you want you can select it uh, from here and here they say stop value after capture uh, event one and probably we would like to stop the value from capture two so we are basically aiming to capture a square wave that is generated by a function generator so we will capture the wave on the rising edge and then on the falling edge so at first event we will send the value of the timestamp to the capture one uh, register and then on the falling edge we will capture another event and will store the value in the capture 2 register so this is the instead of keeping both on the rising edge we will keep the the polarity of second event on falling edge and we will click this to reset the counter after time uh, even two timestamp and we are not using the APWM feature so we will just leave it and then there are the enter feature of this uh, ECAP module so we want the in the ECAP to post an interrupt on eCapture1 and we also want to post interrupt on eCapture2 and in case there is no event occurring and the pin is idle so we want to get to generate an interrupt on overflow condition as well so all these interrupt we get we want but there is a problem we cannot use this block alone we have to use the hardware interrupt block along with this to capture the uh, hardware interrupts so we will again go to the simulink library and here in the scheduling we have this hardware interrupt and this hardware interrupt is uh, these are basically there are uh, numbers that are given to the every interrupt and if you go to help here you will find basically the uh, what num what CPU and PIE numbers are for specific interrupt so if we come down to here here you can see these are the interrupt tab this is the interrupt table for the our microcontroller and we are using the e cap 1 module only e cap 1 pin so this is our interrupt we, we would like to capture the interrupt on this pin and the PIE number is 1 and the CPU number is 5 so we will keep the CPU number to 5 and the PIE number is 1 and we will keep the priority to let's say 30 and we don't want it to be preemptible so we keep it 0 and then this uh, 
we'll make a function subsystem so the function subsystem is basically uh, every time an interrupt is posted so this block will send that uh, signal to trigger this block the uh, function block and at output we expect two values from uh, this block because we have only used two uh, events event 1 and event 2 so event 1 is on rising edge and event 2 is on falling edge so we expect two signal from there we will use a dmux to or we don't we don't need to use dmux simply we can uh, display both the values on a single display but since we are running it in uh, and yeah one more thing we have to keep the sample time to minus one so whatever value that we put on the uh, overalls in the solar section that value will be copied here and then we want to use a red transition block as well and then we would this we would like to display the result and here we will be i'm expecting that we will have two values of the capture one module capture one register and capture two register so let me uh, set the hardware up and then i'll come back and we will show uh, see the results here okay i have set up my little uh, experiment and i'm sorry i'm not in my lab currently so i probably will not be able to use a function generator so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the PWM generated by this microcontroller and will then feed that PWM to the ECAP module and this PWM uh, module I'll be talking about this how to properly set up in a, another video but for now just consider this is a signal coming from a function generator. So uh, let me uh, show you how we can wire set up the wiring so basically if you come to here this uh, target hardware resources here you will find the epwm section the epwm that we are using is this one the pwm 2 a pin assignment and it is assigned to gpio 2 and if you go to the data sheet so you will find the pwm here the P respective pwm pin here so it, it was EPWM2A, it is assigned to GPIO2 and this is pin number 38 and on J4 connector and the J4 connector is here. If you go to the picture, so this is where the, this one is the J4 connector and let me show it here as well. So probably your pin should be somewhere here and similarly so we will basically take the output from that pin and feed it to the ecap pin and for ecap i will be using the the pin let me show it here so i will be using the ecap 6 so it is assigned to gpio 57 and gpio 57 is if you come down in this data sheet so it is down here in the some of the last pages of this data sheet and that is sorry so here you see the gpio before gpio uh, 57 there is they, they, they have uh, installed a level shifter so you can provide a five volt signal as well to this pin so this is gpio 57 and it is connected to eq ep21 and eq ep20 sorry it's not 21 it is 2i and this pin the 2i is it will be somewhere here so this is this is one and this is two so this is eq ep2i and eq EQEP2I is connected to this J15 and this is the third pin so 
this one we will basically take the output from GPIO2 and feed it to this specific uh, pin and let me show show you where this pin is actually in the board so if we go up again to the picture of this launch excel let me show this is basically the j14 and this one is the j15 and since we are uh, using the eqepb so it should be this one so let's go back to the simulink and see how can we set it up so basically this epwm is uh, running at 50% uh, duty cycle and 400 hertz so uh, we expect here the signals to be captured on uh, according to that uh, input uh, frequency so let's uh, run this program and see observe the results here okay one thing i forgot to set up is the probably the solver setting so that is we need to keep the solver on 0 point 0 to sorry 0 0.005 so it should be let me try with this one and if it works it's well and good if it does not work we will reduce the time uh, sample time at this point of time i lost my voice and i don't know what was the reason uh, but the original program that i uh, ran uh, was not working so i made few changes uh, so the mistake that i was making is that i was using a wrong ecap block so instead of using ecap 6 i was using ecap 1 so i changed that from ecap 1 to ecap 6 which is basically connected to gpio 57 another change that i made in the program uh, was instead of providing a constant duty cycle to the epwm block i am now providing a variable e duty cycle that is changing from 0 to 80 and that's it the rest of the program uh, worked uh, very well and i also made another change into the function block that is i added uh, a summation block which gives me the number of times the block has been executed so every time the block ex is executed it adds a one value to it so the second display block that is coming out from the function block is basically showing us the number of times the block has been executed by triggering the uh, ecap pin so that's it i'm hopeful we will see you in the next video thank you